Hey guys, this is Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today we're going to talk about the sequel to In Flight, Mile High by R.K. Lilly. And we pick up where we left off, where her father just beat her to a pulp. She was in the hospital and she was actively trying to push James away. And it skips a couple of weeks to where she's now working again and she kind of still is like distant with James and he just is trying to contact her all the time and he's buddy buddy with Stefan now which I think is funny but good and Bianca starts to overcome some of her old demons and her old fears and she is willingly submissive on a different level than she was before and so we get to see where their relationship goes and how each of their pasts play into their relationship and into their life and huh Mr. Cavendish is a very persuasive man very very persuasive and despite the color I have grown to like the man very much. We spent a lot of time in the fourth floor in this book I think twice and then we Bianca deals with his exes because the man admitted that he was a slut with his body but he wasn't with his heart. Oh he continues to speak amazing things and crude amazing things and continues to be James Cavendish. Lots of drama in this one and I think it beat in flight for me. This is happening more and more now. I like the style where the second book is more character building along with how the first one was and not solely plot. So I want to talk spoilers and for those of you who haven't read it I seriously recommend going out and picking it up. It doesn't disappoint. It's if not better a quite good equal standing with In Flight and the third book comes out the 12th of this month and oh I'm excited and a little mad at myself that I finished it with so many days to spare. I spoke with the author to tell her how amazing it was over my Twitter which you can follow it's at Tana McFarlane. I will slip it up right here and in the doobly-doo. So even the author told me oh yeah this so-and-so days and I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna totally finish it within like a day of that. I finished it the same day I spoke with her about the first book. Did it to myself. But I can't say I regret it. So I'll see you guys next time on Bookworms Talk, where I will hopefully start reading Beautiful Disaster. I'm getting so many recommendations for it, and I'm really, really excited about it. In my head, I was like... The next one comes out like in April, so I should, you know, hang on and wait so I'm not so like, oh, I need the next one. But, um, yeah, I'm getting so many recommendations, and I truthfully am so excited. I got to the pigeon part, and that's about it. But I want to read more, because pigeon, enough reason, yeah? Yeah, that's reason, pigeon. Okay, five pigeon reasons. Bye, guys. This is a lovely, lovely, delectable book, and oh my god, the series covers are so pretty. And my black and white candle does not do it justice. So yeah, really check those out because I think they're so pretty and I kind of wish I had them in hard copy so I could pet them. You know how I am, me petting my books. So this Damien guy, he needs to, he needs to just not be there. He needs to go away. Okay? Okay. On the other hand, Murphy can stay because I think he's one of my new favorite characters ever. There's this entire scene where she's at the bar with a couple of her girlfriends, you know, and I just need to read it to you because I was mortified and it was so funny. Oh. So they're talking about her losing her virginity to this guy and they're asking how it was and they're like, On a scale of 1 to 10, how good was he? How about, I want him to fuck me to death until I might die right on that scale? And as if that wasn't like, whoa, enough, then he comes up behind her and is like, that's a heartwarming assessment, love. He has the amazing ability to pop in in the most awkward moments and it's so disarming and it's just another reason that we love James Cavendish. Bitch be cray cray! Ah! Oh, I love Murphy so much! When Melissa threw that drink and James, like all ninja, got it to miss Bianca and I, he's like, bitch be cray cray! Oh my gosh! Murphy, you can stay! Forever, you come live with me, please. Something that bothered me with Bianca was that she kept talking like their relationship was a short term thing and it's just like minutes or seconds from ending. So I kind of thought that he was joking about, you know, fucking her on a horse. He wasn't joking. He doesn't joke. James, freaking long name, Cavendish, doesn't joke. Like, I don't see how she couldn't understand that he is so serious about her. She, ha He has clothes for her and all of his prop 
properties, he all but asked her to move in, and then he talked about having babies. I, he's serious, Kay, I don't know how you're doubting this. This girl, I swear, I really want to take argument lessons from her. She's great. She's trying to get him in the house, so she's like, oh, well, what if I get hurt and throwing the guilt thing at him? But you know what? It worked. And in reality, if you wanted something that, to happen like that and you knew that was the card to play, you would say it. So many times in these books, they're like, well, I told him to come and he wouldn't, so I didn't know what to do, so I just listened to him. No, not the way Bianca plays it. I don't really understand why Bianca has this thing where she was running from intimacy all the time. I understand that she had the really rough upbringing with her father and fitting for herself and all of that. I understand that. But I don't understand is how it relates to them and being close to somebody and letting somebody in. I don't understand how that necessarily correlates. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, hey, Miss Genius, you know those phone calls. They're from your father. I can guarantee you. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. The tattoo. He was serious about that tattoo. He's serious. Serious. As soon as he started unbuttoning his shirt, I put the Kindle down and I stepped away. I was, it's the tattoo. But then, not just, okay, the tattoo of her name, I was like, oh, that's so, oh, I have a really big issue with getting a tattoo of your boyfriend's name or your girlfriend's name. Like, it's not, I don't, no. But somehow her portrait on his back was just different. You would think that that would be more of like, that's someone's face on your body. But I found that sweet and I found the name weird. I'm crazy. I'm aware of this fact. And so then I'm like, can you take him seriously now? He had a tattoo of your name and your face on his body. Take him seriously, please. James is great. He just by not physically touching her or interacting with her on the plane made her realize that she didn't just need him physically but emotionally. And that was a big step and the next thing, you know, was realizing that she really loved him. She didn't say it. That's one thing in this book that kind of bugged me, but realistically, I was happy they didn't because I would have felt like it was such a rush. So I am perfectly happy waiting for the third book to hear the three words. James said he was worried that Bianca didn't care for him and that for the first time in his life, he didn't care if he were to be used by her because he would take anything that he could get. It's that, what kind of confession is that that you still doubt their seriousness, Bianca? What is, how? I love that he's so persistent that he gets her, you know, to talk about the moving in thing and then because she's in one situation, she agrees to the moving in thing and then he pushes the marriage thing at her and he's, it's hilarious how he can do that so well. I kind of think Jackie's sweet. Her intentions are at least amiable because she just wants to protect him. Maybe she didn't go about that great, but I think her intentions were okay. He started talking about his mother's jewels and her engagement ring and saying how it would look good on her left finger. Are you crazy, James? She's going to have a panic attack. Calm your face. When Jules and Jolene bombarded her in the bathroom and showed her her nipples and kissed her and spilled all the old beans of James's and their relationships and the whole double sub thing and holy crap, I didn't see that coming at all. I adore Lana. Adore her. And then she said, you finally made James fall in love. It's so obvious that they love each other. Get off your asses and say it, guys. Guys. Just, you, just say it. We all know it. Fucking hell. The person that was calling wasn't her father. It was his father's wife. And she said that he's been missing for over a month. You know what he's been doing? Probably watching you. And so then Sharon comes to the door. The, the letter that she left said that she had a, a brother that was a year younger than her that lived in Manhattan and had nothing to do with Sharon or her father. Holy crap. How did that kind of news? And then we are ended with Sharon was murdered, presumably by her father, and the gun in her mouth the same way her mother died, and she... What? That's the end? That's it? I am counting the days for Grounded. I mean, counting them. So I want to hear you got what you guys think the third book's really going to be about. I mean, some details here, because I'm so excited. It's my excited face. Yeah. I think this series is one of my top five favorite series up in the air series. Yeah, you made it there. Congratulations. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time on Bookworms Talk. Like I said before, I'm going to try to read Beautiful Disaster. I might be putting up Stolen Nights. Who knows? I'm hoping for Beautiful Disaster, though. I hear you. I hear you. I want to read it, too. It's just all these other books in my 
my mind right now. So I'll see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk. If you have any book recommendations, drop those down there. I am, you guys really know what you're talking about with the book recommendations because everything I've read of you guys so far has been awesome. So keep it up down there. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oh no, oh no, bitch beat cray cray. Arguably the best conversation in this book.